lot of the folks that were there uh, to see that one at the Coliseum when uh, Dundee and Jim Morris uh, defeated the fabulous ones. And of course, uh, with what had happened up here and everything else, it led to a match that is coming up down at the Mid-South Coliseum between Steve Kern and Bill Dundee. Now, there are no partners. There's no Stan Lane. There is no uh, Jim Morris that's going to be involved in it. And in this match, it is going to be a loser-leave town. And this is a situation where there's a guaranteed loser. Hi, here comes Eddie Marlin. Hey, oh, yeah, Eddie, we can get down there. Uh, happy holidays to you. Thank Good you to have you out here. Man. We were just talking about the uh, Dundee-Steve Kern match, uh, Eddie, and it's a guaranteed loser. Is that That's correct? That's right, Lance. I got both of them's name on a contract. Both of the men are well aware of it. It's 12-26-83. Uh, you know Dundee lost the leave, uh, lose the leave town before. Yes, he did. He came back on the count of the tournament. This time, both men know that it's for one year. Under no Ooh. circumstances will they come back. There's no circumstances None that they're going to be able to come back in here, like a tournament or anything like that. That's all out. One year from this day. And both of them have agreed both on it. And a year from this date. Wow. Yeah, Dundee and Steve. Come. That is quite a commitment in there. And I'll tell you what, you got to be dead serious. Be both of those guys to sign something like that and be involved well, in it. Well, they both were dead serious. No, well, I know that for a living. They right? want each other pretty bad. Yeah. Okay, Eddie, thank you for clarifying that because uh, a lot of the people ask, you know, sometimes about the, the term. And Eddie Marlin has just indicated one year. He's got the contracts right there with Dundee's name on it. Kern's name on it one year from uh, December the 26th. Uh, that is what uh, the duration of the loser leave town is for. Steve Kern, Bill Dundee. Let's take a listen to some of them. Here's Steve first. You know, I know it's the day before Christmas and a lot of people are getting their last minute shopping done and getting all the presents under the tree and looking forward to a nice holiday season. And I sure hope you all have one. But Myself, I'm kind of backed into a corner. I'm faced with a situation that I hoped would never happen, but apparently it has, so it's upon me. All the pressure seems to be left with me. Well, Stan Lane's gone home for Christmas, and it won't be the fabulous ones together in Memphis this Monday night. It's going to be me by myself. A lot of people are wondering if he'll be in the crowd. Well, let me assure you that Stan Lane won't be anywhere in the area. All right, now the thing is, is it's down to me and Dundee. You know, a couple weeks ago, we came out here and were lightheartedly making joke about Dundee, calling him Tattoo. Well, I used to know Bill Dundee a year and a half ago, and he had a sense of humor, and we didn't take, think much about it. But apparently he did, and he's really put the pressure on. You know, I don't know what's happened to Bill Dundee in the past year. I think his ego started to bother him. I think he had felt like he hasn't beat enough people. And he's looking for a real big win going out in 1983. Well, let me say this. When I step in the ring in Memphis Monday night, I know that Bill Dundee is going to step in there knowing that he can beat me one way or another. But I'm going to try to have the same confidence on the other side because that I was his partner and I watched him for a year and a half beat a lot of men. So I'm going to say this. I've learned a lot from you, Bill Dundee. I'm not out here to knock you. I'm not out here to run you in the ground. As a matter of fact, I'd do anything I could to get out of this match, but I'm backed in the corner. And I don't want my fans coming to me later and saying, why didn't you have that match with Dundee, loser leave town? Were you scared of him? I'm not scared of you, Bill. But it's the fact that I know there's a lot of fans out there supporting you. And I know you've had a lot of fans, and you've done a lot of great things in this area. And I know they're going to be out there behind you 100%. And I don't want to step on anybody's toes at Christmas time, but I'm forced to. The whole thing boils down to, if I don't beat you, I leave, and Stan Lane leaves. And that's the end of the Fabulous Ones. And I've got a lot of Fabulous Ones fans out there, too, and I ain't about to let them down. When we go to the ring Monday night... I hope that you're man enough to step in that ring by yourself and not have Hart or Jim Morrison in the background. I hope you're man enough to face me one-on-one -on -one and see who the toughest is. Because, Bill Dundee, I'm going to give you the wrestling lesson of your life, and I'm going to do everything possible to beat you right in Memphis, Tennessee, because I don't want to leave this area, especially at this time of year. Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah, that's got to be a Merry Christmas thought. Uh, Steve Kern, and let me tell you, he is one tough son of a gun, but don't forget, Bill Dundee has got a lot of experience, and we have seen him handle a lot of guys a whale of a lot bigger than Steve Kern is. 
Bill had some comments himself to make about the upcoming match. Loser leave town. Well, I just guarantee one year. And I went over there and I looked at that little taped interview that one of the fabulous ones or, or whatever you freaking fracks what I call them, but you all you rednecks out there want to call them the fabulous ones. So Steve Kern and I noted a little tone in his voice, a little tone of a guy running scared, brother. He don't want this match. If there was any way out, he wouldn't take the match. Well, I don't blame you, Steve. I don't blame you. If I was you, I wouldn't take it either. Because when you go down the tube, brother, the whole fabulous image goes down the tube. Now, little Billy Dundee, that's right, little Billy Dundee, Jack the Giant Killer, you're going to call him from now on, Daddy. Now, you come out here a couple of weeks ago and you're all saying tattoo and you're making lighthearted jokes about Bill Dundee. Well, everybody was laughing except Bill Dundee. Now... When I told you I was six foot nine and 290 pounds, he showed up, brother. With that body and my brain, there is nothing going to stop Bill Dundee what he wants. And he wants it all, Jack. Every match I'm going to sign from now on, Corn is going to be a loser leave town. And you're first on the list. Why don't you just leave Stanley one more week, brother? And I'll have a match for him the next week in a loser leave town. And he'll be gone. Then, whoever else wants to sign one, I'm going to tell Eddie Marlin I'm signing nothing unless it says on the bottom of that contract, loser leave town. Because I'm going to be the king of the hill around here, Daddy. I'm going to be the king of the hill, Kern. Now, you're right, Jack. The only thing you said it was true, you was my partner, and that's exactly what you was. I was the star of that thing. I was the guy that won all the falls. I was the guy that won them belts. I just gave you one to make you feel good. Now, I'm going to tell you something, Steve. I'm coming to that ring, brother, to prove a point, to be like Roberto Duran, to be one of the greatest at whatever it is I do, and he's the best at what he does, and I'm the best at what I do, and I'm going to be the only guy in the world that runneth tag team out of that area. Not one man, two at the same time. Because when you go, the other one goes. So I'm going to tell all you fabulous one fans to come on down here. And when that music starts, and he starts down there, and that spotlight's hit that sparkly jacket, you start to scream and say, ain't he cute? Oh, ain't he beautiful? But nobody really cares, Steve, because when it's all over, and I'm standing in the middle of the ring like this, Daddy, and you're leaving with your head hung down walking up that aisle, they're going to know who the best man was. Oh, yeah, and I've already told you all, but some of you out there don't believe it. All the Fabulous One fans don't believe who the best man is. And I really don't care if anybody believes it, because I don't need none of you rednecks on my side. I hope you all come down there to be yelling for Steve Curran, because it'll be the last time you're yelling for him. Because like I said, with the stuff I'm going to use from now on, there's nothing I can do to lose, brother. Steve Curran, I wouldn't be you for all the tea in China. So, bye-bye. Yeah, that was the world heavyweight championship belt. Good to have you here, partner. And, of course, you know uh, the world champion, Nick Bockwinkle. And uh, he is by visiting us. Steve, you've... Uh you and Stan got that victory ring going again. Well, I want to say, you know, like, a lot of people, I imagine, are expecting me to come out here and start blowing my own horn a little bit after the match with Bill Dundee, but... You know, I know he had a lot of fans. You know, Bill Dundee didn't start slipping off until this last year, and he's done a lot of great things in this area. So I'm not going to come out here, and I'm not going to knock him or run him down on the way out. All I've got to say is that's probably one of the toughest matches in my life. Oh. And I know you've got a little piece of film. Yeah, I know I a lot of people that didn't get a chance because the weather was bad. I know a lot of people didn't get a chance to get out and see it. And I'd appreciate it if you showed it to them, you know, because I'd like to look over it again myself. But... I'll, you know, I have to say this, Lance. You know, I came out here for a long time, and I knocked Dundee. I called him Tattoo, but at the at the time, it was more or less just playing with the man, just irritating him a little bit because I could see him slipping away. But like I said, I can't come out here and knock his ability in this area because he knocked off a lot of the top competition for through the past years, and he stayed on top for a long time. But Bill Dundee is no longer around. I'm sorry it had to be me, but I was forced into that position. I want to thank the fans for supporting me that night because I feel like I had him 100%. We do have the tape. We're going to show it in a second. I want to make the comment, Steve, that... Uh, you had the bout. It was in the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee, and it was for all the marbles. Just, just leave the entire territory, and it is true. A, uh, a name that has been with us for a long time uh, is no longer with us, and that is the superstar Bill Dundee. Steve Kern won the match, and now let's take a look. This thing went about a half hour, and it was <laughs> Kern struggling his way back. Dundee and this no disqualification. No stopping match to a finish. We're right at the 15 minute mark. Kern is in the ring, but he fell to the floor. Dundee all the way across the ring. He leaped from the corner all the way over. Got a one, two. Kern's leg is on a rope. One and a half. 
16 minutes in, and Steve Kern still hanging in there. That's the kind of determination that he has. But Dundee, a master of every kind of tactic you can think of, makes up for the lack of size. He Dundee can do all the hot dog. And oh, look at that. Dundee showing off, doing the Tarzan with his foot on Kern's chest. And Kern kicked up from the floor and nailed Dundee. Headbutt from Dundee. Billy has proved that he can do everything in the world to Kern, but pin him. Steve going after the big guy who's got no business in there anyhow. And Steve Kern working on Jim Morris. Look out for Dundee. All we see is hand. He's got a chain. He's just waiting on Kern. Kern got Morris out of there. the train, the chain, and now Steve's got it.